Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be teaching you today about the Apostle Paul teaching in Athens. But first, let's begin with prayer. Lord God, you are worthy of praise. You are a powerful Savior and an awesome God. We worship you and give you all of our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. Thank you for being alive and real. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's practice our memory verses. I think we all know this first one, so let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, 1. Good. Now this is our challenge verse. So I'll say it once and then we'll all say it together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1.3 Now you say it with me. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1.3 Great. Next week, I think we'll plan on starting a new memory verse. So if you have learned these memory verses, I'd love for you to send me a video of you saying them. All right, let's begin our lesson. As you may remember from last week, the Christians of the early church in Jerusalem were being treated very badly by people who believed in God but did not yet understand that Jesus is His Son. We talked about how one of the first deacons, Stephen, was even killed for teaching people about Jesus. At the end of the lesson about Stephen, I mentioned another man named Saul. Saul was there when Stephen was killed and even held the cloaks of the leaders who were throwing stones at him. Saul believed in God very strongly, but he was bound and determined to arrest Christians and even kill them. Considering Saul's hatred of the Christians, he seems an unlikely person to become a missionary for Jesus. But with God, all things are possible. God changes lives, and He changed Saul's life on the road to a place called Damascus, where Paul was traveling to look for more Christians to arrest or kill. God miraculously blinded Saul and spoke to him. Saul knew then that he had been wrong to harm Christians, and that Jesus really is God's Son and the Savior. God sent a man named Ananias to restore Saul's vision. After that, Saul became known as Paul and went on to preach about Jesus to many, many people. One of the places where Paul went to tell people about Jesus was the city of Athens, a famous city in Greece. The people of Athens loved to talk about religion and important ideas. Studying and learning were very important to them. They also made many idols and worshipped and prayed to those idols. Idols are anything people worship that isn't God, such as statues. People have different reasons for worshipping idols. Some do it because they don't know about the real God. And some do it because they just like other things more and have made a poor choice. Today, most of us don't worship statues or things like that. Nor do we bow down or sing to idols we might be worshiping. Instead, we tend to spend more time on and pay more attention to created things rather than to God, the creator of everything. I brought some idols with me today. As I pull each item out of this bag, I'll tell you a little bit about how it could become an idol to someone but also why it shouldn't become an idol to anyone. A 
as you can see, this is the dollar bill. Many people spend a lot of time and effort trying to get as much money as possible because they think that as long as they have money, they will be able to get anything they want. They also feel it gives them power to do whatever they want and treat people however they want. The truth is that all the money anyone has really belongs to God, and He just lets us use it. He wants us to be good stewards of our money and spend it according to His will. He wants us to use it to pay for things that we need, but also to help others. No matter how much we have, it is important to remember that God can always take it away, and we must not love it more than we love Him or His people. Here, I have a video game and a couple of toys. These represent our time. Many people feel that their time is the most precious and important thing in their lives. Because of this, they may choose not to spend time praying or going to church or studying the Bible. They might rather use that time to play games or play with toys or watch TV or go fishing or any number of things. None of these activities are wrong, but they should not become more important to us than God is. We should always make sure to save the best part of our time for Him. These items represent fame. Many people make fame an idol. They might be willing to try harder to become famous by making YouTube videos or by practicing a sport or anything else than they are willing to put effort into getting to know God. Your relationship with God should be worth far more than any effort you put into anything else in life. Here we have a mirror. Some people turn themselves into an idol. They always put their own needs and wants ahead of what God wants them to have or to do. And they don't ever put others' needs and wants ahead of their own the way Jesus has taught us to. Let's think for a moment about why it's bad to worship idols. Money, time, fame, and caring about ourselves are not bad things. But there are at least two problems with worshiping them. The first problem is that God told us not to worship anyone or anything but Him. He is the creator of all these things and of the entire universe. It is wrong and foolish to go against His commandments. The second problem is that none of these things can really save us. Money can easily be taken away from us, and we can't take it with us when we leave this world. Our time on earth will be limited no matter how we spend it, but if we have a loving relationship with Jesus, our time with Him will last forever. Fame goes away just as quickly as it comes, and the only person we really need to care about knowing who we are is Jesus. And certainly we cannot save ourselves. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is why God sent His Son to save us, and that is why He is the only one we should worship. When Paul saw the idols that the people of Athens worshipped, he felt bad for them, and he told them not to worship them anymore. They were even worshiping one object that had written on it the words, To an unknown God. Paul realized that this was really the true living God that he was supposed to tell the Athenians about, but they just didn't know it yet. 
I'm sure you all know many things about God that you could tell people who have never heard of Him. And you probably have reasons why you believe in Him. Reasons why you believe in something are called evidence. As I tell the rest of today's story, I want you to either write down or draw pictures of some of the evidence you have about why you believe in God. Your words or pictures could include something big and spectacular like someone being healed by Jesus, or something less noticeable like a beautiful sunrise. Paul told the people that God created the world and everything in it. He explained that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Paul explained that God proved He is God when He raised Jesus from the dead. He explained that God is not like silver or gold or stone, not an image made by man's design and skill. Paul told the Athenians that they needed to repent and believe in the true living God. Many of the people listened to Paul and became Christians, but that meant getting rid of their idols. Some people were happy to do that, some were not. But God is alive, and He is much better than any created thing. After Jesus came back to life, His disciples risked their lives to tell others about Him because they knew that God is alive. They knew it was okay to die for what they believed because they were absolutely sure that they would be with God in heaven. Hundreds of people joined them in starting the church. We're part of this church today because we believe in the living God. This is further evidence that God is alive. There are so many ways we can see God alive and at work in our lives today. Be sure to look for ways other than those you've already listed today, this week, and praise God for them. Next week, we are going to learn more about Paul, the man in today's story who told the Athenians about the true living God by beginning a study on the book of Philippians. We are planning to have church in person then, so I can't wait to see all of you who are able to come and start this exciting new series. If you are not able to come, though, the lesson will be put online again as well. Now, let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, because you're alive. We praise you today and thank you for being powerful and mighty. Thank you for being involved in our lives. You are the God who loves us and takes care of us. Please continue to protect us as we finally get to come back to worshiping you together in person next week. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.